Hi, I'm Jim Bullis of Thornwood Corporation. I would like to address the question of whether voids and porosity are a problem in large 3D printed composite parts like industrial molds and tooling. Unfortunately, information about this area is conflicted and confusing. For example, I recently participated in an industry seminar where professionals working for a prominent government-funded national research laboratory presented technical papers where they implied porosity and voids are a natural characteristic of large additive printed parts. If, as they say, porosity is a natural part of large 3D printed parts, it means additive manufacturing won't work for making molds and tooling that require vacuum integrity, such as virtually all aerospace molds and tooling. However, published news releases and industry journal articles routinely describe projects where aerospace tooling that requires vacuum integrity are being printed and used successfully. Well, how can this be? How can a process with a fundamental flaw produce sophisticated aerospace molds? Of course it can't, but there is a simple explanation. The answer is the seminar presentation and the published articles are not talking about the same print process. That's right. Although they appear similar when printing, at their core, they are two profoundly different additive manufacturing print processes. One has a problem with voids and porosity, the other doesn't. Let's see how we got here. A number of years ago, the research lab, referred to earlier, came up with the idea that by using an extruder instead of a filament, as used on small 3D printers, much larger parts could be produced. They made some impressive initial parts, which got them well-deserved praise, recognition, and notoriety. Soon after, a number of machines were sold using that initial technology, but parts produced by those machines exhibited both porosity and voids. After unsuccessfully trying to fix the problem, they eventually decided that porosity and voids were a natural characteristic of large additive manufacturing. They openly communicated this opinion in formal presentations and seminars, like the one that I recently attended. About a year after the lab started working on their system, a technically advanced company in southern Indiana began developing an alternate large-scale print process. Having operated large polymer extruders in the past, they started from a totally different direction. Instead of starting with small printers and trying to scale them up as the lab did, they started with a really large machine and a large print head right at the beginning and addressed issues one at a time as they arose. This resulted in a print process that was significantly different than the initial technology developed by the lab. They have already been granted over 60 patents on these new developments. Parts produced with this new process are solid, fully fused, void free, and free of porosity problems. This was confirmed by a recent cooperative program between the Boeing Company the Air Force Research Laboratory, and Thornwood, the Indiana company that I'm talking about. This collaboration produced an aerospace mold using the new technology which maintained vacuum to a level that exceeded aerospace standards and from which acceptable composite aerospace parts were made. Essentially, they proved that molds produced with this new technology worked just fine in the normal aerospace production. Also, according to Boeing and the Air Force, the tool was produced 65% faster and at half the cost normally expected. Purdue University's Composite Manufacturing and Simulation Center, a world-renowned composite laboratory, analyzed parts printed using the new technology and found them homogeneous, void-free, and without porosity problems. In fact, major manufacturing companies are already routinely using this new print technology in daily production. Some of these, like Boeing and Bell Flight, are large aerospace companies who are successfully printing large molds and tools for their own use. 
Others are making a variety of products, such as LM Industries, who replaced multiple older machines that use the original print approach with the newest additive print technology. They use it to 3D print the chassis for their Ollie Autonomous Bus, which is now in daily production. One major supplier to the aerospace industry, AirTech Advanced Materials Group, is currently 3D printing custom tools and molds for aerospace customers using the new technology. They have installed large machines with 40 foot long tables to do this, both here in the US and in Europe. Another company who is using the new technology to manufacture custom tooling is Ascent Aerospace, further emphasizing that the new print technology is a proven industrial process. So if you see a presentation or a publication that deals with voids, porosity, or seal coatings on large printed parts, you can bet they are talking about the old, original process and not the newest technology. Also, if someone tells you that porosity is a characteristic of large-scale additive parts, realize that while this may be true of the old, initial approach, it is clearly not true of the newest additive technology a technology which is already being used in routine industrial production every day. The newest large-scale additive manufacturing technology is fully developed, proven, and available on a variety of different size machines and, as I've said, is already successfully producing a variety of large-scale industrial products. It is also saving its users a ton of time and money, but that's another story. In short, the newest additive technology works really well, and porosity, which was a problem with the old initial print system, is not a problem with the new technology. If your company might benefit from these advances, you should check it out. If you want to learn more about large-scale additive manufacturing, there is a book that might help. It's called A Manager's Guide to Large-Scale Additive Manufacturing, Understanding a New Technology. It was written for non-technical managers in an easy to understand everyday language. It offers a clear, comprehensive overview of all aspects of the newest large-scale additive manufacturing technology. It is available on Amazon, either as an electronic download or as a printed book. I hope this clears things up and thank you for watching.